Welcome back to Inverted Aviators RC. Today we're going to show you how to add our fully removable digital head tracking system onto any RC plane you have. It's really simple, it's really straightforward, so let's get into it. So we're starting with probably the most important part of this whole process and that's aligning and setting up where your head tracking system is going to go. And so I took a pencil here and I'm really scoring the foam instead of using the lead just because it kind of dents the foam a little bit makes it easier to see. But it's the most important part because if you put this system too far forward or too far back it does have a little bit of weight that goes along with it and it can really throw off the center of gravity of this plane. So just make sure you put it as close to the center of gravity as possible. In my case with this Timber X, the wings are fully removable, so I wasn't able to put it directly over the center of gravity, which is a little bit back from the leading edge of the wing. Instead, I cut it as far close to this uh, windshield piece of foam, because this, this plane doesn't have a plastic canopy, but I cut into this windshield part as much as I could so that I could place everything as far back as I can thus keeping it as close to the center of gravity as possible. And thankfully in the battery tray, there is enough space to push the battery back to offset this head tracking system being a little further forward. But either way, the process for this is making a lot of horizontal and vertical cuts with the X-Acto knife and then taking a little needle nose plier and going through and picking out all the different pieces of foam. I could go and just cut it and kind of peel it out with the X-Acto knife, but by picking it, I can be very precise, very exact, as you can see, I can pick out the exact amount of foam that I really want to. And so with this bottom part that keeps the pan and tilt as well as the O3 air unit, I wanted it to be down and flush with that top black part of the canopy. So you can see it does fit in there really nice, but I am gonna have to cut out a little bit more just to make sure everything is sitting in there nicely. So after a bit more cutting, we can see that this housing piece fits in there really flush with the top black part of the canopy. And then I have to go back and cut out this excess part in the middle so that the bottom servo can slide straight through. And after picking out a little bit more foam, we can see that this whole system now slides on right on the top. And we still have to install the servo horns inside of the um, anchor piece. But as you can see, it fits on really nice and we can screw that in and really cement it in place. And now it's just to repeat the process for the top, the back, the uh, VTX side of this piece. But again, it's just a lot of vertical and horizontal cutting just to make sure that these nice squares are really easy to remove and pick out. And again, make sure that you know what you're cutting into. If you're using a different plane that's got a little smaller uh, canopy beneath it, make sure you're not cutting into a very strong structural part or an ESC or something. So just make sure uh, you, you know where you're digging. Uh, but again, it's just the process of going and picking out the foam. Uh, getting rid of all of the little bit extra you can go back and kind of seal up the edges with maybe hot glue or some sort of tape just to keep everything nice and secure but all i did was uh, pick out the foam and then glue in the parts so after aligning the top two parts we can see that everything is looking very nice the ga camera gimbal slides in there and then the vtx just pops in and everything's looking real nice we just now have to secure it in there because of course we don't just want this sitting there but the first step is almost done. One of the main things I wanted to keep in mind while designing this head tracking system is, is ease of use. I want it to be just as easy to use this system as it was to not use it, meaning when I go out and fly, I only want to plug in one wire and then have the whole system ready to go. This means I need to create a new y leaded adapter wire so I can get power from the battery to the normal ESC, as well as the Maytech UBEC Duo, which is how I'm powering the VTX, the camera, and all the other servos. Uh, this was pretty straightforward as I just used a couple of XT60 connectors and some pretty large wire because I knew that this is where all the power was coming from and I didn't want to skip out on a, a really small wires. So I made sure to prep all of the XT60 connectors before soldering any wires on because it's just a lot easier to get the whole process a little more streamlined and it's really just adding a little bit of flux and solder and just like that I'm adding a little bit of uh, Y leading action here. And then it's just a matter of stripping the ends of these wires and making it so that when I plug in the battery to one side, um, there is a male side that goes to the normal ESC, because again, that needs just the same amount of power. And then I added a little bit of heat shrink as well, just to protect everything. All this is going to be inside of the plane, so if you want to add a little conformal coating, a little something extra to, for more heat protection, 
as well as keeping everything water resistant. That is what I did here. And again, the whole idea behind this is just making it super easy. I could just have two different wires. I could power this, the Maytech UVEC Duo with its own external uh, two or three cell battery, but I just really like the idea of since it can handle up to six cells of power, uh, why not just use that? And it just makes the whole process a lot more streamlined and I really like the idea of just plugging in one uh, set of wires. So now you can see the part that we just cut into the plane now needs its wiring. So I have the power adapter on that far right side, that's the XT60. Then I've got an XT30 that'll give power to the receiver as well as a standard servo channel at the end there. And that's for taking a signal from your receiver and passing it to the Maytech UBEC Duo, which can turn on and off the uh, 12 volt output. So once I string all of those wires into our different pieces that we just cut holes from, we can now really install these parts into the plane and get you up in the air. So if what I just said about the power wire didn't make any sense, here's the actual installation. I took the stock power adapter up through the top of the plane, then I plugged in our new y leaded power wire, and then I fished it back through the bottom of the plane. So you can see at the bottom here, that is where I'm gonna be plugging the battery in. And then I took these adapters that we just made and fished the wires down through and then up through the back of the canopy so that I can plug it into our receiver. But then I just secured it in place with just a press fit. I'm gonna hot glue it in a second. But as you can see, that's where we're gonna be clipping our top piece in. And then we have the same process with our front gimbal housing. We fish the wires down through the middle of the canopy, press it in place, and then a little bit of hot glue is all we need to get this thing ready to go. This is also gonna be a little cook's choice here. I add an eight channel ELRS receiver, which is totally overkill for this situation. I'm only using three channels to control pan, tilt, and then the on off switch. So if you just had something like a really small spectrum four channel receiver, that's all you really need. But in this case, I had a spare one laying around. So all I did was plug in the pan and tilt servos, then connect it to my receiver, add a little bit of double sided tape onto the back and stuck it to the side of the canopy and we're good to go. That's all you need. That's all, it gets power from that board that we already showed, and it should be a really easy install. Also, if you're using this same receiver in a bunch of different planes, it should be super easy to exchange it and go in between builds. This part's also pretty straightforward. We don't want these parts to just be friction fit in. Instead, we added a bead of hot glue around every part of the PLA plastic that's touching the foam just to make sure everything is strong as possible. And then we use a little bit of extra foam laying around to scrape away any of the excess just to keep the build looking nice and tidy. And I think this is all of our favorite parts is actually seeing it in, in action. So you can see at the bottom here, I plug in the battery in only one spot, just like normal. And then our head tracker immediately snaps into place. And if you're curious about how this head tracker works, we have videos on how to make it yourself. And if you're not that handy, you can check out our website where you can buy it if you would like to. We will build all of these on screen before shipping it out. So not only do you get the head tracker, you also get to see it in action. Uh, but this whole system is really cool and it works really, really well because the head tracker connects to your transmitter. The transmitter sends it to this receiver that's in your plane. And just like that, you got a really nice head tracking system. And again, the beauty of this whole head tracking arena here is that you only have to plug in one wire, just like normal. And then when you want to go from plane to plane, you just have to pop this system out, pop it into your new jet and you're good to go. Uh, but that's going to do it for us here today. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you have any issues or you have a really cool build. Make sure to join our Discord and share everything there. I also want to say thank you to our members. You guys are the reason we're able to do fun projects like these. So thank you so much for your continued support. If you want to be a member, you get a whole nice awesome perks like seeing these videos early before they come out. As well as a monthly newsletter that goes into our projects in a lot more depth. And it's just a really interesting thing to add as well. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Inverted Aviators RC. Stick around for more flights with this new system as well as new fun projects that we like working on. So thank you so much for watching.